Hi everyone, it's B. So, today's video is a follow-up to my last video about the dogs of survival horror, because in today's video, I will be talking about the cats of survival horror. Can you tell I'm excited? <laughs> Though dogs are very commonly found in survival horror games as either companions or enemies, cats are rarely found in survival horror games, and when they are, they have very minimal roles, unfortunately. It's honestly very surprising to me that cats don't appear more often in survival horror games because, to me at least, cats and horror kind of go hand in hand. Throughout history and in the folklore of many different cultures, cats are associated with things like Halloween, bad luck, witches, death, spirits, and evil. Ancient Egyptian mythology implies that people thought that cats could protect against evil spirits, and many people, even today, believe that cats can sense the presence of ghosts and possess the ability to sense when someone is going to die. So needless to say, cats, death, and the supernatural are all very closely connected, which is exactly why I think that there should be more cats in survival horror games. But that is enough of a history lesson because there are a few cats that we will be talking about in this video, starting with Rory from Fatal Frame 3 The Tormented. Rory is a black and white tuxedo cat owned by Miku, one of Fatal Frame 3's main characters. Miku's parents gave her Rory as a gift before they sadly passed away. And a fun little fact about this cat is that the name Ruri means Lapis Lazuli, which, if you're unfamiliar, is a bright blue semi-precious stone, which just so happens to be the same color as Ruri's eyes. Ruri currently lives in the home Miku shares with her boss-slash-friend, Ray, and can often be found lounging in different areas of the house, hanging out with Miku in her room, or eating her kitty kibble. And before you ask, you can, in fact, pet the cat. While Ruri is sitting on the couch or in the altar room, Ray can walk up to her and present her hand, the way that you do, to cats, and Ruri will either sniff it, paw at it, or walk up and rub her face on it. In terms of cat behavior, this is pretty spot on, just speaking from personal experience. So, you know how I mentioned before that many people believe that cats are able to see ghosts or spirits due to their heightened senses and ability to see in the dark? Well, Rory herself is actually a little ghost detector. Sometimes Rory will sit herself in the hallway or facing a particular door and meow or hiss at it as an indication that something is off, and sure enough, when Ray goes to check and see what Rory is meowing or hissing at, she usually ends up finding a ghost. Sadly, this ability is used very minimally in the game, as Rory can only explore the house which she shares with Ray and Miku, and I would have really loved to have seen a Fatal Frame game, or really any survival horror game for that matter, with an actual cat companion who could use these ghost-detecting abilities throughout the entirety of the game, because I think that could be really, really cool. Like, just imagine you're playing as Miku, you know, traversing through the manner of sleep, and Ruri is next to you, hissing or meowing or something to let you know that there's going to be a ghost coming up soon, so you know to get your camera obscura out. <gasps> that would be so cool, right? My own cat does things like this all the time, actually. Sometimes in the middle of the night, I'll look over and I'll see my cat Merlin crouch down like he's about to pounce, just staring at a dark, empty corner of the room for like 20 minutes at a time with his tail wagging like he's looking at something. And I'm not gonna lie, it's really terrifying. He's like almost got me convinced that my house is haunted or something. So I can personally vouch that integrating a cat into a horror game would definitely fit right in because they can be so creepy sometimes. Moving on to our next series of games, we will be talking about the Cats of Silent Hill. Cats actually appear pretty frequently in the Silent Hill games, but usually in less direct ways when compared to Rory's appearance in Fatal Frame 3. The first appearance of a cat in the franchise is in Silent Hill 1, in one of Midwich Elementary School's lockers, which a cat bursts out of, startling Harry, who quickly steps back and says, just a cat, to himself. Silent Hill 1 also has two different storefronts dedicated to cats, one called Just Cats and another called Cat's Eye. Silent Hill must have a real thing for cats, despite there being very, very few of them actually seen in the game, because in Silent Hill 3 there is an advertisement which can be found in the subway for Minmo cat food, which says, growing strong and healthy, Minmo, all of which is written in Comic Sans font and has this super goofy looking cat right in the middle of it. 
Minmo, despite just being a cat food brand on an ad in Silent Hill 3's Subway, has become a fan favorite similar to Mira, the Shiba Inu introduced in Silent Hill 2's dog ending. There's actually quite a huge amount of Minmo fan art and merch out there, and I really wish they would have made Minmo a running joke in the franchise the way they did for Mira, because I think it's like the perfect candidate, especially with the silly cat and the comic sans in an otherwise pretty terrifying and dark game. Cats in Silent Hill 2 and 4 are generally just alluded to through story elements such as drawings on a foggy window made by Laura, a young girl who appears in Silent Hill 2, or a toy cat used by Henry, Silent Hill 4's protagonist, in a puzzle alluding to Walter Sullivan, the game's antagonist's history of abusing animals, unfortunately. Cat food, besides Minmo cat food, can be found in several Silent Hill games including Silent Hill 4 and Silent Hill Shattered Memories, so there are definitely cats in Silent Hill. I guess we just only get to see one of them for some reason. Moving on to our next franchise, we will be talking about the Cats of Resident Evil, or lack thereof. There are no cats in the entirety of the Resident Evil series. However, in a version of Resident Evil 4 proposed by Hideki Kamiya, a man whose popular work includes Resident Evil 2 and Devil May Cry, there actually were plans made for there to be a zombie cat enemy that was referred to as a witch. This enemy never ended up being used in Resident Evil 4, and the idea ended up being used in Devil May Cry instead as an enemy called Shadow, which is a shape-shifting cat, because as I mentioned before, the man who proposed this idea is also famous for working on the Devil May Cry series. And here's a fun fact for you. Devil May Cry was originally developed as a potential version of Resident Evil 4, intended to be released for the PlayStation 2, being worked on by what was referred to as Team Little Devil, headed by Hideki Kamiya himself. However, Capcom felt that the prototype he created was way too different from what the Resident Evil series was known as, and instead the prototype became Devil May Cry, which is very similar to what happened to Haunting Ground, which is something I recently made a whole video about in case you're interested in learning more about that. Also, I don't know about you, but I personally think that having a zombie cat enemy would be absolutely terrifying, because not only are they a way smaller target than an enemy dog would be, but they're also super quiet and can sneak up on you and claw you to death. It sounds absolutely horrifying. There actually is a survival horror series with cat enemies, Parasite Eve. This enemy is a neo-mitochondrial creature, which is essentially a zombified cat or mutated animal created by having their mitochondria modified. And these cats can be found in the game's Chinatown area and are notably very strong enemies. There are also basically a million other zombified animal enemies in Parasite Eve, including anything from chameleons to monkeys to pterodactyls to frogs, so there being cats in Parasite Eve doesn't really come as a big shock. For our last cat that I'll be talking about today, I will be talking about a new survival horror game. Crazy, I know. I know that I usually only talk about retro survival horror games and retro games in general on this channel, but survival horror as a genre is still alive and thriving with new games coming out all the time, not just from major developers like Konami or Capcom, but from indie developers too, and these games deserve recognition as well. The last cat of survival horror that I will be talking about is Biscuit, a gray tabby cat who is actually the main character and protagonist of Etched Memories, an indie survival horror game where you play as a cat who is on a mission to reunite with his owners and uncover cover the memories of his past where he was used as a research test subject. The game's demo was released two years ago as of the time I'm making this video, and unfortunately it seems that the game was never finished, which is a real shame because I think it had some real potential to be something different and new that the survival horror genre had never seen before. And I love the fact that the game developers use their own cat's noises in the game as well as pictures of their own cat as reference as well. Maybe if we're lucky, someday this game will be finished. But for now, it is a free demo available on Steam. All right, well, those are all of the Cats of Survival Horror that I could find. I'm a little bit sad that this video couldn't be more in-depth like my Dogs of Survival Horror video was, but unfortunately it seems that survival horror as a genre doesn't really have that many cats in it. But I will say that if a survival horror game were to come out where you could have a cat companion to help you reach small things in small places, or to detect ghosts or hidden items or something, I would be so excited. Uh, so game developers out there... Uh, please? <laughs> so, as always, thank you all for watching. I hope you all have a good day or night or whatever time it is, wherever you are, and I will see you all again next time.